Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana 
Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nitai Gor Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gor Hari Bo Jai Jai Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jai Shri La Prabhu Pad Gaur Premanande Hari Bo. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Viranta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirase Shashanyavadi Paschachade Satarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna So we're hearing about Narada Muni Sarth not Narada Muni's search for the devotee who has received the greatest mercy from the Supreme Lord. And we heard how Narada Muni had gone to Hanuman and Hanuman was telling him, no, no, I'm not the greatest 
devotee, I couldn't have got the greatest mercy from the Lord. But if you go to the Pandavas, they're very great. And Hanuman is telling about exactly what service Lord Krishna does for the Pandavas. Narada Muni was praising Hanuman that Hanuman did many wonderful services for Lord Ramachandra. He served Lord Ramachandra in many different ways. As his carrier and as his physician, as his friend, as his servant. But, but Hanuman said, you should see Lord Krishna serves the Pandavas. The Pandavas are so dear to Krishna that Lord Krishna personally serves the Pandavas. Lord Krishna will do anything for the Pandavas. Whenever he hears any difficulties that the Pandavas are in, then Lord Krishna will immediately go there and he'll want to be there and to try to help and make some arrangements for the Pandavas. We know like uh, Durvasa had come there to their camp after the Pandavas had taken their food. And Draupadi has a Draupadi pot, pot and she could feed unlimited people so long as she hasn't taken her meal. But it happened that Durvasa came after they'd already taken their food. So what to do when the Draupadi was in a difficult situation? Because Durvasa came along with all of his disciples and he had many disciples and they were expected to feed all of them. And if they couldn't feed them, then Durvasa no, he's very, he gets very angry and he will curse. So what to do? So Draupadi looks at her pot and there was just some tamarind leaf there. And so she offered that to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna was actually all the way in Dwarka. He came running all the way from Dwarka because he knew that Pandavas are in difficulty, Draupadi is in difficulty. And what to do? So Lord Krishna says, look in the pot, is there anything there at all? Is there anything there? Somehow they hadn't washed the pot yet. So there was still some tamarind leaf there. He said, offer that to me. And immediately Krishna took the tamarind leaf and it belched, right? And that, and that signified that, and, and because Krishna was satisfied, then everybody was satisfied. Durvasa and his disciples, they had all gone to take bath. But when Krishna took that tamarind leaf and felt satisfaction in his belly, then all the followers of Durvasa along with Durvasa, they were all satisfied and they didn't have any appetite anymore. So not having any appetite, they didn't come back to the camp of the Pandavas because they thought if we go back, they probably prepared a big feast for us. They probably prepared a big meal for us. We won't be able to eat. It will be embarrassing. So they said, we'll just leave. So they left in this way, they, they were saved from a difficult situation. So Lord Krishna serves the Pandavas in many ways. Now it's mentioned here in, in this verse, I'll just read it to you. It says, uh, he acted as their servant, advisor, messenger, charioteer and court attendant. He kept watch for them at night, followed them in procession, and even offered them praise and obeisances. So this is the mercy of Lord Krishna on the Pandavas. Of course, we know how Krishna is Partha Sarati. He became the chariot driver for Arjuna at the Kurukshetra war. That was the arrangement that he said, I, I'm not, not going to fight, but I can be the, I can, you, what, one side can have my army and the other side can have me, but I'm not going to fight. And so he came as the chariot driver. But as the chariot driver, he was able to save Arjuna in many situations. And of course, Krishna even broke his promise 
although he promised he's not going to fight, but when Arjuna's life was in danger, then Krishna broke his promise and he came charging towards Bhishma to defend Arjuna from the wrath of Bhishma. And Krishna became the messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. Before the Kurukshetra war, Maharaj Yudhisthira wrote a letter asking, let's make peace. Why should we go to war? We're all one family. It's not good that we go to war. We should make peace. And Lord Krishna delivered the letter. But that was not, it was not acceptable. Duryodhan wouldn't agree. And Dhritarashtra also. They said, no, there has to be war. And even then, when Krishna was leaving, Duryodhan tried to arrest Krishna. He tried to take Krishna a prisoner. And at that time, Krishna revealed a universal form to Duryodhan. Duryodhan was trying to capture Krishna, but when he saw the Vishwarup, then he, you know, he, there was no way he could capture the Vishwarup. But these are some of the difficulties which Krishna underwent on behalf of the Pandavas. So he was their servant, he was their messenger, he was their charioteer, he uh, even stood guard for them sometimes in the night. They stay awake the whole night guarding them. So this is the nature of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala. He reciprocates with his devotees, with his Bhaktas. Because the Pandavas are all devotees, so Lord Krishna is obliged to them. And he always wants to take care of them and serve them and look after them. The Pandavas, they want to serve Krishna. They don't want to take service. They like to give service. But it's a transcendental competition between Krishna and his devotees. The devotees want to serve Krishna. Krishna wants to serve the devotees. So Krishna is Bhakta Vatsala. He is not Jnana Vatsala or Karma Vatsala, but he is Bhakta Vatsala. It's only by devotion that Krishna can be understood, that Krishna can be approached, and Krishna can be conquered by pure love and devotion. So this is seen by the Pandavas, how they were dealing with Krishna, how they wanted to serve Lord Krishna. Out of his affection, out of his affectionate concern for them, what would the Lord not do? He was seen taking the combined roles of their servant, companion, and dear most friends, and then took the same, and they took the same role for him. So Krishna would offer obeisances to them. Yudhisthira and Bhima were senior to him in age. So Krishna would offer obeisances to them, and Krishna would follow them in procession. Maharaj Yudhisthira, being the eldest of the Pandavas, he became the ruler, and Krishna would follow behind in the procession. And Krishna would embrace Arjuna and Nakula and Sahadev, who were the youngest, they would come and offer obeisances to Krishna. And in this way, they would show etiquette in dealing with each other. Although Lord Krishna is the father of all living entities, in the Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, Aham Bijapradapita, he's the seed giving father of all living entities. But still, the, uh, Lord Krishna would play the part of an ordinary person, and he would offer obeisances to Maharaj Yudhisthira and to Bhima. He would show them great respect because they were senior to him, seemingly, seemingly they are, they are senior to him in age. Uh, Lord Krishna was their companion, their servant, and their dearmost friend. 
We know from the Bhagavad Gita that Lord Krishna selected Arjuna to hear the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna said, Bhakto Sime Saka Cheti Rahasyam Pieta. Because you are my devotee as well as my friend. So that friendship is there between Lord Krishna and the Pandavas. So when we have real friendship, there's nothing you won't do for your friend. Somebody's your friend. It's very special to have friendship like that. Of course, uh, that kind of friendship is not so easily achieved, but Lord Krishna and the Pandavas, they had that kind of very deep, very real friendship with each other. Lord Krishna would sacrifice everything for the Pandavas. He would break his promise. He would give up his vows for the Pandavas to protect them and to be with them. And the Pandavas would do everything for Krishna. They simply loved Krishna and wanted to serve Krishna. And you see what Arjuna did for Krishna. Arjuna fought the Kurukshetra war. Arjuna didn't fight Kurukshetra war because he wanted to fight, but he did it for Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna wanted him to do it. And that is why Arjuna took part in the battle. So that, that is the, the, the type of friendship which is there between Krishna and the Pandavas. Uh, because the Lord resides constantly with the Pandavas, the capital city has become like a sacred forest where great sages perform austerities and residing in that city awards one the same pious benefit as performing austere acts of penance. So Lord Krishna would come and live with the Pandavas. Sometimes Arjuna would go to Dwarka and sometimes Krishna would come to Hastinapur. Just like after the, the Pandavas, that it was thought that the Pandavas had been burned alive in the house of Shilak, which set, was set on fire. Of course, Lord Krishna knew that the Pandavas couldn't be dead, but still that was what people had thought because the Pandavas had disappeared for some time. And then suddenly they reappeared. At, at that time, there were some other people in the house and they got burned alive. So people didn't know who, they thought it was the Pandavas. They just found the bones. They thought this was the Pandavas. It was a, an elderly woman with her sons had come there to take shelter in the, in the house. But then the house was set on fire. So this elderly lady with her sons, they all perished in the fire. But the Pandavas and Kunti, they escaped. So. Uh, Lord Krishna, would, he came to Hastinapur to find out how are the Pandavas. He wanted to see, wanted to be with them. And when Lord Krishna would come and stay with them, then so many other different people would come and visit Hastinapur because Lord Krishna is there with the Pandavas. Certainly all the great sages and the Brahmanas and Rishis and so on, they would all come there. They all wanted to have darshan because they know Lord Krishna is the supreme absolute truth. He is Swayam Bhagavan and they come to offer their respects to Lord Krishna. And so that palace becomes like a sacred forest, like a holy place in the forest where the sages live. Although it's a palace and it's in the city, but it's become like a forest because all the sages are coming there. And those sages, they're usually in the forest, but they've come there to see Lord Krishna and to get the blessings, to, to offer their respects to Lord Krishna and to take advantage 
of his association. And just like people go to holy places, you go to the holy places, you go off to Mathura, or Vrindavan, you go to Mayapur, or you go to Naimasharanya or somewhere, you go there to the holy places. You want to get association. We don't just go to the holy place to take a bath, but you go to get association and to hear from the great devotees who are there. So people would come to Astinapur to hear from Lord Krishna and to see the Pandavas, to take advantage of their association. Because we know association is so important. You've got to get the association. So that way, the holy places. Maharaj Yudhisthira told Vidura, Babad Vidir Bhagavatas, Tirta Buddha Swayam Bibo, Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani, Swantastena Gadabrata. Vidura had been away visiting holy places for a long time. And after a long time, he came back to Hastinapur. He came back after the battle of Kurukshetra because he knew his brother Dhritarashtra was living there and he was living in the home of the Pandavas. Although the Pandavas were his enemies and although he had tried to kill them in so many ways, Dhritarashtra at the end, all of his sons had been killed in the Kurukshetra war, and he was now living in the home of the Pandavas. So Vidura came to preach to his brother, Dhritarashtra, to tell him, you've got to prepare for giving up the body. When you get old, right, the Vedas say, Pancha Sorvam Vanam Brajit. From the age of 50, you have to go to live in the forest. It means you have to get ready for the next life. Pancha Sorvam Vanam Brajit. You go to the Vana, go and live in the forest. Once you get over 50, you're old man. Death can come anytime. You have to prepare for the next life. And there's Dhritarashtra, an old man, really old. All of his sons are all dead. And he's living in the palace with his enemies, the Pandavas. So Vidura can't come to, to liberate, to help Vidura, to help Dhritarashtra to get out of that condition. And Maharaj Yudhisthira sees Vidura come back. Vidura had been traveling, he got association, he went, he met with Uddhava and he met with Maitreya and he got a lot of spiritual instruction. But he came back to Hastinapur. He didn't come back just because he thought, oh, back home, now I can, you know, when you, some people, they go and visit the holy place and after they're away in the holy place, they think, oh, I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to get back to my home, my place, you know, my bed and my comfort. <laughs> so people like that, they go to the holy places and they're so eager to come back, you know. But Vidura didn't come back in that mood. He came back in the mood that he wants to save Dhritarashtra from his plight. Because Dhritarashtra is going to go to hell if he doesn't do something quick. And Prabhupada said, there was one Dhritarashtra in those days, but today there's a Dhritarashtra in every home. There's a Dhritarashtra in every home. Needs, you, they need a Vidura to go there, to get them out of that well of conditioned life. So Vidura preaches very strongly to Dhritarashtra. And he said, you're eating the remnants of Bhima. Bhima was the one who killed all the 100 sons of Dhritarashtra. 
and there and Vidura said, You are eating the remnants of his food. What is this? You know what? You're old, you were born blind. Now you're now you're not only blind, but your power of digestion is gone, your hearing is gone, your body is weak and infirm with with old age. Death is coming very soon. You have to get ready. You have to do something about it. So Vidura really preaches strongly to Dhritarashtra and he convinces him, get out. But it was Maharaj Yudhisthira, he came to glorify Vidura and he praised, he said, wherever you go, that is a holy place because you carry the Lord in your heart. It's a devotee which makes a holy place. Just like this temple. This temple is a holy place. When the devotees live a holy life. If we don't live a holy life, then this is not a holy place. So very important when we're living here in this temple that we live a proper spiritual life. That we you know, that we're very faithful and uh, absorbed in the spiritual act activities. Just like we have the deities, we have our morning program, we have evening program, we have many activities going on. We want to take part in the activities. It's important for us to use this life for the service, this opportunity which is given to us to serve Krishna. So make this a holy place by our devotion because you carry the Lord in your heart so you can purify the holy places. This is the power of the devotees that they can purify. They, because people generally, people come to the holy place and they will leave all their sins there. They come to the holy place to leave their sins. But the devotees come to the holy place, they will purify the holy place by their devotion, by their chanting, by their seva, by their mood of service for Krishna. They'll take away all the sins. Just like Mother Ganga, she didn't want to come to this planet. But Maharaj Bhagirata told her, you should come because although people sin, Mother Ganga didn't want to come to earth. She thought all the sinful people will come and bathe in my water and they'll leave all their sinful reactions in my water. But Maharaj Bhagirata told her, if you come, devotees will also come and bathe in your water. And they will neutralize the effects of all of the sins of the people. The devotees, they will not only neutralize it, they'll purify your waters. So then Mother Ganga, when she heard that, then she, okay, then I will come. Because very nice if the devotees will all bathe in my water. So the same way, the Pandavas are living in Hastinapur. Lord Krishna is there. And so many, that place has become a holy place. Although it's a palace, and generally kings, when they live in the palace, it's just a life of sense gratification. You know, the king in the palace, they'll have so many beautiful women there, and they'll have all kinds of opulent food and there will be intoxication and all kinds of activities going on. So generally, that's the business of the kings. The kings often live that kind of life. Today, at least, I don't know. Of course, nowadays, there's no kings. The kings have all, they're all finished. They've all lost all their kingdoms. It's all taken from them. But in the past, there were great kings. Like even the time Maharaj Prataparudra, how they lived, they were great souls. 
every day they would, you know, they could recite scriptures, they would hear Mahabharata, they would hear Ramayana. Maharaj Prataparudra, when he came to massage Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at that time he recited the Gopi Geet, right? Can you all recite Gopi Geet? How many of us can recite Gopi Geet? Maharaj Prataparudra is giving Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu massage, and at the same time he's reciting Gopi Geet. And so, you know, he was a, a devotee king. He was not a, a materialistic king. He was a, a great devotee. So, kings, the, the opportunity is there to devote oneself, but opportunity is also there for sense gratification. Anyway, Maharaj, uh, the Pandavas and the, they were great devotees and Lord Krishna, that's why he comes to stay with them. Lord Krishna, is a, the devotees want to go to be with Krishna. Krishna wants to come to be with the devotees. Okay, so Hanuman's heart was immersed in transcendental taste from speaking about the Pandava. With his ecstasy raised even higher by Narada's dancing, he continued to speak about the topics. So th this is Hanuman. Hanuman is speaking to Narada Muni, telling him about the Pandavas. And when Narada Muni hears about the Pandavas from Hanuman, Narada Muni starts dancing. He's dancing in ecstasy, think, wow, great, wow, these are wow, wonderful devotees. He's in ecstasy. And Hanuman, he's also feeling ecstasy, speaking about the Pandavas. But Hanuman's not dancing. Hanuman's doing the speaking. He's the one to speak. But it's ecstasy for him also. This is... The, the transcendental platform. Somebody is in ecstasy speaking, somebody else is in ecstasy hearing and dancing and whatever. You know, somebody's in ecstasy in the kitchen, somebody else is in ecstasy on the altar, you know, all different services. This ecstasy is all ecstasy. So this is the, the taste, the pleasure of Krishna Kata. There's a rasa there. There's a special taste which you get speaking about Krishna and hearing about Krishna. The more we get free of our conditioning, the more we will taste the nectar. When we hear about Krishna, we hear about the Pandavas, we will become very joyful, we'll be ecstatic. Not, of course, prasadam always gives ecstasy, right? We hear prasadam, oh, ecstasy, oh, everybody, oh, prasadam. But there's, a, prasadam is not the only ecstasy. There's also a lot of ecstasy in hearing the glories of Krishna and Krishna's pure devotees. It's very important for us. We want to develop that taste. And the more we develop that taste, that is the sign that we're actually purifying the heart. We're getting rid of all the anartas from the heart. Because of our disease, our jaundice, we cannot taste the nectar, right? We're all like jaundice people. We don't taste the sweetness of the sugar candy. But as the heart becomes clean, then we will, we will also taste the nectar. So Hanuman's going on speaking. Hanuman says, all the calamities that befell the Pandavas were most auspicious and desirable because those calamities made the personality of Godhead anxious to join the Pandavas quickly yeah when the different calamities would happen 
what have the Pandavas, for example, uh, they were given poison, poison food. They know Bhima has a voracious appetite. And so they thought, make a cake and put some poison in it. So they put a bunch of poison in the cake and they sent this cake over to the Pandavas and Bhima saw the cake, immediately he ate the whole thing. And he ate it because all poison, he was, he fell unconscious. And the, and then the, the, the Kauravas came, Dur, Duryodhana and all them, they came and they saw Bhima, they saw he's unconscious, he's eating the, he's eating the cake, all the poison, he, he fell unconscious, so they thought, oh, get rid of him. They, and they knocked his body into the bottom of a pond. There was this pond there with a lot of fish in the, in the pond. But these fish were actually poison fish. <laughs> and they thought, put him in the, in the bottom of this lake and let the fish eat his body. So there were all these fish there which were poisonous. So they knocked Bhima's body into that lake and the fish all began to bite Bhima's body. But because the fish were poison, the poison from the fish counteracted the poison from the cake. So the two poisons counteracted each other and this way Bhima came back to consciousness again. So he was saved. But that was lucky. And then another time, they, 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 they sent the Pandavas to stay in the house. They, they built this very special house and they told the Pandavas, this is for you. You can all go and stay there. So the, the Pandavas all went to stay in this house, but the house was made of shellac. And the nature of shellac is it burns, it's highly flammable. So the Pandavas went there, but they were warned by Vidura. Vidura had warned them, you have to be very careful that your lives may be in danger. You're going to stay in that place. You very, be very careful. So secretly, they had made a, a tunnel to get out of the, the house in case there's any danger. They had built an underground passage to go out. So it happened one night, there was a big storm and an old lady came with her children and they had nowhere to stay. And they came to the house where the Pandavas were staying. So they were given shelter for the night. So that night, that was the night they set fire to the house. And when they set fire to the house, the whole house immediately all went up in flames. And, and the elderly lady with her sons they were burned in the fire. But the Pandavas, along with Kunti, they escaped. They escaped through the underground passage. So nobody knew. People all thought the Pandavas had all been burned in the fire. But actually, they had escaped. And then, then there was the, 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 the game of dice and the gambling. And the Pandavas lost everything. They lost their kingdom. They lost all their property. They lost all their wealth. They even lost Dropadi. And then when they lost Dropadi, that was when the, the Kauravas tried to disrobe Dropadi. They brought her forward and said, now she's our maidservant. And at that time, Draupadi was actually contaminated. She was in her monthly cycle. So she was, she was dressed in simple cloth because, because of her uh, contaminated condition. But they brought her and they tried to disrobe her. But of course, Krishna saved her. Krishna manifested himself in the form of an unlimited sari and protected her. So actually they were, the, the Kauravas were trying to disgrace Draupadi by disrobing her, but actually they glorified her because she showed her great 
chastity and devotion. She, she was in danger and who could she approach for shelter? Her husbands could, 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 could do nothing. Although she had five husbands, none of them could come to help her. And then she called to Krishna. So Krishna came in the form of the Sari. Actually, it said that one time Lord Krishna was peeling an apple. And when he was peeling an apple, somehow the knife which he was using to peel the apple slipped and he cut his finger. So at that time, Draupadi ripped a piece of cloth off of her sari and used it to wrap around the finger of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna told her, in the future, I will repay you for this. So when they tried to rip off her sari, at that time, Lord Krishna came as an unlimited sari covering her. So in this way, Draupadi was saved by the grace of Krishna. And the Pandavas were saved repeatedly during the battle of Kurukshetra. Arjuna was in danger and it was always Krishna who would come to help him. Just like when Abhimanu was killed, after Abhimanu was killed, Arjuna vowed that tomorrow I'm going to kill that Jayadrata. Because Jayadrata, he had, a, he had a benediction from Lord Shiva that he could hold off the Pandavas one day. And it was that day when Jayadrata held off the Pandavas that they killed Abhimanu. So Arjuna was, he said, tomorrow I have to kill Jayadrata. So they all knew that Arjuna is going to try to kill Jayadrata. So they were trying to protect Jayadrata. And it was coming to the end of the day. And they thought, ah, if it's the end of the day, Arjuna is not going to keep his vow. He's going to have to give up his own life because he couldn't keep his vow. But Krishna did a trick. Krishna did a trick. Krishna arranged that the sun would drop. And, the, and it was like, oh, oh, it's already evening. This, the day is over. And they all stopped fighting. And that was when they told, Krishna told Arjuna, now's your chance. And Krishna made the sun come up again. They thought the sun was, the, sun, the, the end of the day had come. But then Krishna saw that it was not the end of the day. It was only a cloud covering the sun. And Krishna told Arjuna, now's your chance. Now you kill Jayadra. So Krishna saved Arjuna so many different occasions. He, he, he was always concerned for the welfare of the Pandavas. And that was the uh, loving relationship which is there between Krishna and the Pandavas. Because the Pandavas, they would do anything for Krishna. So Krishna always wanted to take care for the Pandavas. Just like when Krishna showed the universal form, he's, everybody's going to die. Everyone except for you Pandavas, they're all going to be killed. They're all going to die. Only the Pandavas would remain after the battle of Kurukshetra. Why do the Pandavas remain? Because they are very dear to Lord Krishna. So they're, they have that relationship. So Krishna promises, my devotee will never perish. So he has that promise, he keeps that promise. Hanuman continues, O Pandavas, pure love has subdued you. Ignoring discrimination and etiquette, you engage my Lord as your messenger and charioteer. So Hanuman is describing, he's, he's talking to the Pandavas. Actually, Hanuman's talking to Narada Muni, but he imagines he's talking to the Pandavas. The Pandavas are not there, but Hanuman's addressing the Pandavas. And he's telling them, he said, you, you didn't care about etiquette. 
that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, is to be worshipped by everyone. But the Pandavas have such a relationship with Krishna that they can accept service from Krishna, that Krishna can become their messenger and Krishna can become their chariot driver. The chariot driver is like a sudra position, but Krishna is willing to take that position for his pure devotees. He will not do it for everyone. Not for everyone. Remember, I was telling about Durvasa, how Durvasa wanted to get Lord Vamanadev to come and fight, to come and fight one, some gang of demons who were coming to Dwarka. And Durvasa came and you have to come. And he was telling Lord Vamanadev, you should come and help. Lord Vamanadev said, no, 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 I'm not. I, I'm here. I have to be here. I'm here with Bali Maharaj. He would only stay where there's devotees. Just like when they cooked a big offering, Duryodhana cooked a big feast with ghee, all the best foodstuffs. He wanted Lord Krishna to come and eat the food. And Krishna said, oh no, I'm not hungry today. I don't have an appetite. But when Vidura said, come to my house, Krishna went and Vidura offered banana skins. Krishna took. But Vidura was so so and so much ecstasy that Krishna is coming to my house. He was offering the bananas, but he, he threw the bananas away and gave Krishna the banana skins by mistake. And Krishna accepted the banana skins because they were offered by Vidura. And Vidura is his pure devotee. So that's the power of pure love devotion that it conquers Krishna and Krishna doesn't worry about discrimination or etiquette or any of these things it, where there is pure love just like sometimes the bridge Basi people when they're cooking they will be cooking and they'll be cooked and they'll taste also at this <laughs> yeah you know we're not supposed to do that you're supposed to offer but Brijbasi people, because they're Brijbasis, they can do that because they they have that love for Krishna. They're natural devotees. They they have that raga for Krishna. So the etiquette that's that's that, that's vaidhi bhakti, rules and regulations. But raga bhakti is much higher than vaidhi bhakti. Krishna doesn't care so much all the mantras, the brahmanas chanting all the mantras. He's more attracted by the pure love and devotion of Mother Yashoda. Mother Yashoda is coming with a stick. You rascal, I'll beat you. Mother Yashoda is chasing Krishna with a stick. She's going to tie him up. Krishna's running. Oh, save me. Save me. Mama is going to beat me. Mother Yashoda, I'll catch you, I'll beat you. <laughs> Krishna is more inclined by that love than by all the mantras and the Vedic mantras and the hymns chanted by the Brahmanas. That is not so pleasing to Krishna. Ah, my, ah, you Pandavas must know some transcendental herb or mantra that can enchant the most powerful enchanter. <laughs> uh, this is Hanuman saying, that he's saying that you Pandavas, you must know some special mantras or some special herbs. And that's how you're able to do all these things with Lord Krishna. Nobody else could do all of these things with Krishna. How could you do it? You must know some secrets. You must know some mantras or is it special herbs, you know, that you can do all of these things with Krishna, that Krishna becomes your servant and Krishna offers obeisances. Krishna is taking so much trouble for your service. It, there must be something magic with some magic power you've got. So just like, uh, 
people would wonder, how did Prabhupada do it? How did Prabhupada attract so many people to Krishna consciousness? What was his magic power? That magic power, that is there in the holy name. That is there in pure devotion, where there's genuine devotion. Then that conquers over everything. That helps everyone to become powerful. Right? We say, Mukam karoti vachalam pangam langai te girim yad kripata maham bande shri gurum dinatarino. That by the mercy of the spiritual master, a blind man can see the stars, a dumb man can recite poetry, a lame man can cross mountains. This, this, if, if you have that faith, you have that faith, you take the faith, have faith in the Guru and Krishna, then that power is given that you can do anything. Prabhupada said, impossible is a word only in the fool's dictionary. Only fools will say impossible. There's nothing impossible for the devotee, Krishna. Hmm? Prabhupada showed, Prabhupada did the impossible. People said impossible, but Prabhupada did it. So impossible is only in the fool's dictionary. But for the devotee of Krishna, nothing is impossible. So after Hanuman jumped up in the air, Hanuman was speaking about the Pandavas, he became so ecstatic. He saw Narada Muni dancing and jumping in the air. Hanuman also be got up and he also jumped up in the air and danced. He's, he's so ecstatic, just speaking about the Pandavas. Okay, any questions? Any comment? It is. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. When Vidura, no, sorry, when Lord Krishna came to Vidura's home, was that uh, banana peel was given by Vidura himself or Vidura Rani Maharaj? Was the bananas given by Krishna or? By Vidura, by Vidura's wife. Ah, Yamara. Why, I don't know. He, uh, he went to visit the holy places. He went on his own. He didn't take his wife with him. When he was traveling in all the holy places, he was on his own. I don't know. Well, I, n I never heard it was Vidura's wife. I heard it was Vidura. I never heard that it was his wife who did it. It was Vidura who did it. Mm -hmm. And who is Vidura? You know, Vidura is Yamaraj, right? Yamaraj, Yamaraj got cursed. To become Sudra. And so it was a blessing for him that he could get cursed because his job is not very nice. You know, if you have to be Yamaraj, it's not very pleasant. You're with the Yamadutas, you know, not very nice looking people. And all the sinful people are brought there. And you have to punish them all. 
not very pleasant. Anyway, Yamaraj is one of the Mahajans. He's a Mahajan, so Vidura is a great soul, a great devotee. And so you see, even he gets cursed to become a Sudra, but he gets very nice association. And he's able to go and visit all the holy places, meet all the saintly people in the holy places. So it's a great blessing for Vidura. We, I don't know exactly when the incident with the bananas took place, but we're told, well, actually Vidura didn't stay long. It must have been before, before the exile. It must have taken place before he went in to visit the holy places, when he was living in Hastinapur at that time. Because when he came back, he didn't stay long. He only came to get Dhritarashtra, to go out. And when, when, they when Vidura and Dhritarashtra left the palace, then Maharaj Yudhisthira said, Oh, where did they go? Where's my uncle? Where are my uncles? And where's my aunt Gandhari? And then he understood they'd gone. And then he said, Oh, I have been cheated by these great souls. And Prabhupada says, yes, he said, great souls can also cheat. And Prabhupada explains that great souls will cheat for a great cause. Just like Raghunath Das Goswami, he also cheated. They wanted somebody to do the puja. The pujari didn't come one morning. And so Raghunath said, oh, I will go. I'll go and get somebody. I'll go and find the pujari, get the pujari. <laughs> and Raghunath just left. He just left home. He didn't, he just went off to Jagannath Puri because his family were always trying to stop him. They wouldn't let him go, but so he cheated them and he escaped. And Sanatana Goswami cheated he, when he was in the prison. The Nawab, the Nawab put Sanatana in, in the jail. And so Nawab, and, and when he was in the jail, Sanatana told the man in charge of the jail, he said, if you let me go, I'm going to go to Mecca. I will go to Mecca and pilgrimage. I will offer prayers for you. And to help, he said, I, this is also some money for you. He gave him a bribe like this. And so Sanatan also used some cheat, cheating to get out of jail so that he could go to Vrindavan, to go to Lord Chaitanya. So great souls also cheat, but for a great cause. So Vidura and Dhritarashtra, they cheated Maharaj Yudhisthira. If they had told Maharaj Yudhisthira, we want to leave home, we want to go to the forest, Maharaj Yudhisthira would never let them. Right? He would never let them. If you ask your family, can I become a devotee? They will never agree. They will never agree. If, if somebody says, I, will, I need to ask my family if I can become, then forget it. They will never, they will never. You have to be convinced that... <laughs> But if you go and ask, well, let me, let me ask my wife, let me ask my family if I can become a, forget it. <laughs> they will never, never agree. So you have to cheat for a, for a Greek. Ramanujacharya, he cheated his wife, right? 
He said, oh, your father has sent a letter. You have to go immediately. You have to go home. Your father wants you to go. To go. You have to go immediately. Oh, oh, my father. Oh, oh. And his old wife went hurrying. Go to her home. Go to her father. And Ramanuja went and took sannyas. <laughs> and that was the end of that match. <laughs> so cheat for the great cause. Okay, any question? All right, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. You have a question? No? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for wonderful class. Uh, from the past time of Pandavas and uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, we heard so many pastimes that they are always engaged with devotional service to please the Krishna. Uh, so our, my confusion is how can we engage more and more devotional service to please the Krishna? How can we engage in more and more devotional service for Krishna? Join the Sankirtan movement. Go out on Sankirtan. We have a lot of pamphlets to distribute for Janmastami. So take the pamphlets and go out and distribute them. Go out wherever the people are. Give them a pamphlet and tell them, come for Janmastami. There's always opportunities for devotional service. You take your big bag. And you put your hand in your big bag and you do your chanting. That's also, that's always there. That chance to do devotional service. Do more chanting. Do more kirtan. There's always service needed. In, in Dwarka, Krishna was living in 16,108 palaces with 16,108 queens. But the queens, they lived like they were maidservants. And they were cleaning the palace. Even though the palace was all marble and there was no dust, they were cleaning the palace every day because they wanted to be servants of Krishna. They had that mood. We have to serve. I should be a servant. And they were cleaning the palace all day. In this way, they kept themselves busy in the service of Krishna. Rukmini would be fanning Krishna with her chamar, with the chamara. They were all, they were always busy in the service, doing service. So that is devotee. Devotee is always busy chanting, chanting the glories of Krishna. So you want to be engaged in Krishna consciousness? There's many opportunities. There's no scarcity of service. We need volunteers, right? We should have, we, 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 I, I saw this, you know, you, you need to put a big, big sign. Wanted volunteers, come and help do service for Krishna. Go out on Sankirtan. There's so many things to be done for Krishna. Contact people. Tell them. Come for Janmashtami program. So we want to make this Janmashtami a, a big success. We want to have a big crowd here. Balaram Purnima, the crowd was not very big. Not much, eh? Yeah. yeah. So we want to make that 10 times. Should be 3,500. Many people here, big city, Bangalore. Many people should all come. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Pranam. Thank you, devotees. We'll meet again tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpatru bhishak pasindu bhiyavacha patitanam pavani bhiyavishnavi bhiyonamonama antukoti vishnu bhaktavrindu.